What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today I want to go through how to make your orchestration sound satisfying. Um, I think when a lot of people listen to orchestral music, one reason why they love it is because of the timeless nature of the different instruments, but because the orchestrations just have something that makes it seem so satisfying. There's a bit of complexity there that just makes it so enjoyable. And I, I kind of want to dive into my, my thoughts on how to do that for ourselves as well. It's kind of a two part answer. I want to share that with you here today. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some new ideas to incorporate into your orchestral mockups. Uh, before we dive into it, I want to give you free access to my on-demand workshop, the complete composers framework. This goes through step-by-step -step how to go from your initial idea to your polished final master. I'll go through every single step along the way, sharing some cool tips and tricks that you can apply immediately to your workflow to really see those results. I'll also share with you my virtual orchestration roadmap that I follow every single time when I work on my mockups to go from, again, that first instrument to the completed master. It's step-by-step. -step. You'll learn a ton of jam-packed, valuable stuff, and I want to give it to you completely free. So you can get access to that right away by using the first link below. Um, just fill out your details there, and I'll send it right over to you, okay? All right, so let's dive into that question. How do we make our orchestration satisfying? So the first part is really, really simple, and that is to fill in all the necessary frequencies um, so that it feels balanced overall. Balance is kind of the main um, the main word here that I'm going for. So there's different types of balance. There's like volume balance, there's like uh, frequency balance, stereo balance, but here we're mainly talking about frequency balance, meaning like how filled in are the different holes in terms of the lows, mids, and highs, right? So maybe let's take a quick listen to um, the, the A section here with my solo viola. Uh, it's a more sparse, and then we'll go to the end of the A prime, which has the whole ensemble, and then we'll talk about the, the, the frequencies there. So here we go. All right, so aside from the fact that the uh, first A section and then the second A section have completely different contrasting ensembles, they still sound pretty balanced, right? And, and usually that results in a more enjoyable listening experience. So why is that the case? The main reason is because the holes in the frequencies are being filled, they, they feel balanced. And let me show you that exactly here. So we have the solo viola and the solo piano. These are the main two instruments in this first A section. So if you have a listen, See how the viola is kind of in the middle C register and the C above, reaching a little bit higher than that, right? So it's kind of, you can call it like the high mids, for example. Now, right below that, we also have the piano supporting in terms of its chords. And that's kind of filling in middle C and below, a couple octaves below. Also notice how the voicings are a bit more spread out at the bottom here to respect the harmonic series. So the whole idea is, even though I'm not taking up that many frequencies overall, like I basically have a three octave range here from the lowest piano notes to the highest viola notes. It still sounds balanced because all the frequencies in between these two extremes are being taken care of. Again, the piano is taking care of the low mids and the viola is taking care of the mids and higher up to that certain point. So if you have any holes in between, like uh, if you if I took away a lot, a lot of these notes in the middle, then it would sound a bit more empty because there's stuff in the highs and there's stuff in the lows but then there's nothing in the middle. So it feels like there has to be something to complete and fill up that gap. If we go into the, uh, the, the A prime section with all the instruments here, let's take a look at all of this maybe here. So highlight it. Right, see how much 
more space is being taken up here. Like we, we go all the way up to like C5, even closer to C6. And then the very bottom, we go down to like C1. So that's like a sub base stuff there to really outline the harmonic foundation. But why does it work? It's because all the mid frequencies in between are being taken care of by the different instruments. And again, we're respecting the harmonic series. We're trying not to put too many instruments close together in the low registers and a little bit closer in the higher ones because they don't fight as much, right? So the whole idea is to make sure that your frequencies are balanced. Um, the, the higher you go, the lower you go, the more attention you have to pay to the mid range as well to make sure that's also being taken care of. Because a lot of amateur mockups, they have high instruments, they have low instruments, and then they have nothing in the middle, and then it feels like a big, big gap. So always ask yourself, are there any frequency holes that I need to fill? And if the answer is yes, keep finding instruments to fill it in, taking up that space, and then ask yourself that question again until you get to the word no, so I don't need to fill in anything else, then you can move on to your next uh, part of your mock-up. And that leads, kind of segues perfectly to the second step, the second part of this answer, is to use ear candy and like fill in the details, and transitions are especially an important part of uh, creating a satisfying piece of music. So I hope you enjoyed the transition here from the, you know, the first day section to the 2D section. Maybe I'll just play that. Right, it should feel like it's just, it's building, 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 the suspense is there, and then it opens up and you're just being hugged by the sound, right? And that, that's kind of what I was going for. Um, so the let's take a look at the MIDI. What instruments were being incorporated here? At the end of the A section, we had the violas and the cellos. Um, kind of seeping in really, really subtly behind the solo viola because I wanted to have a little bit more body of sound there. But what instruments are really leading us? We have the string tremolos. This is from Sin Orc. And we also have the timpani beginning a, a roll as well. And then we have the basses also coming in here as well. Um, and then the bassoon also leading in with its a little bit of a counter melody. So maybe uh, let me try to solo those up. We have the string tremolos. We have the timpani here. Uh, what else? We had the bassoon as well. Let me find that as well. So maybe let's just start with these three instruments. You know what? We'll bring in the solo viola as well for the melody. And right here is where I start the build. You hear the string trams in the very bottom. Right, so they build a little bit and the, uh, where's the timpani? Oh, I didn't even solo it. Here we go. two to the five, and then to the one. And right before I hit the one chord, I also brought in a harp glissando as well. Right, so the harp is, is really just running up that scale, the F major scale to land on that F major chord when it comes in. I also have the choir here build, building up too, so let's have a listen to that. Uh, sorry, filling in the mid range there. They're not super loud, but you hear how it kind of feels in that mid-high register there. And then that combined with the piano, which makes it uh, warmer, that makes it more satisfying as well. Right. And then with the rest of the percussion, the bass drum and the cymbals, those also hit on the downbeat as well. Or just the cymbals. Oh no, 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 the bass drum actually hits on the downbeat there. You can hear that low thump on the on the B1. And there we go. And I believe that's it for that transition there. So in terms of the ear candy though, like other textures I added in to make it more satisfying, I really do like the string tremolos patch here um, from Cine Orc because it's not just sustains, but the strings are kind of going back and forth, adding a bit of grit to the sound, which I do appreciate. So let me see when they're actually playing. Right, it's very soft, but they built to that one chord. And then here after that. So that's again the four to the five going to the one chord. Four, minor four to the five. To the one. Right, so there's that, that satisfying transition as well. So everything feels natural, like it's leading from one, one track to the next. And that, that was the goal there. 
Um, but that's the idea. So number one is to make sure, make sure that your frequencies are filled in. Again, take a look at your MIDI, see if there are any holes, any gaps in, in the MIDI notes in the registers, but also just listen as well. Like close your eyes, ask yourself, does any part of the frequency spectrum feels feel like there are any holes there, any gaps that I need to fill in? If there are, you should go in and fill those in. And number two, once those gaps are filled in and it feels like it's a satisfying um, arrangement, then you can add some stuff on top of it. Maybe you double some instruments. Maybe you combine some families together to add uh, to create a more unique texture. Maybe you add some ear candy, like some string ostinatos or uh, you know a harp glissandi or string glisses or something like that, just to add even more texture and depth to your arrangement. Again, you don't want to go too overboard because once you get to the point of overwhelm and you have to start muting stuff and deleting things, that's not a fun thing to do. So it's it's all a balance and it's so subjective, but. If I could give any advice, those would be kind of the two things I would I would pay attention to, okay? I hope that gave you some ideas. I hope that was helpful. And again, if you want to check out my complete process from going to from the initial idea to the polished final master, then I would love to give you access to my free workshop, The Complete Composer's Framework. Again, we'll go through step-by-step -step how to approach the music making process. I'll give you uh, like tips and tricks on how to apply to your music to make like great melodies and harmonies choosing the right structure for your pieces, my step-by-step -step mixing and mastering workflow, how to orchestrate, all that great stuff, sample libraries, um, DOS stuff. It, it goes step-by-step -step and it's really comprehensive. So I want to give that to you totally free. If you click the first link down below, you can get access to that. And I really hope you enjoyed it as a thank you for checking out this video today. I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon and take care. Bye-bye.